Whatever you do, don't go to websites and download Linux software. Hey, what's up guys, it's Dorian. So this is a little bit of a beginner slash new user video. I've talked to a few people and I'm not singling anybody out, but um, there's some people who don't quite understand how to install software in Linux and how it works, but that's not really their fault. So if you're looking for a piece of software and you're a Windows user, you would go to download and of course this would show a download link for Windows. If I click Windows, it wants me to download steamsetup.exe, which you would install in Windows. But since we're in Linux, if I were to click this link, it wants me to download steamlatest.dev. Well, that works for Debian and Ubuntu-based distributions. I'm using Manjaro, so that's not going to work. It's not going to install. Not only that, but if you go like on the GIMP website here, I click download and it's saying download the flat pack. And then you download it and you realize after, well, now I have to install flat pack and all this stuff. There are some cases, some very rare cases where if you're installing, let's say VMware, for example, you have to download a binary executable and install it through the terminal, but that's very rare. So don't go to these websites, especially don't go to like the launch pads and the repos and download stuff directly. In Linux, the way that it works is very similar to the App Store in Mac or the Windows Store in Windows for certain applications. Linux uses repos. So each distribution has repos that has all the software that you'll need. Some have more available than others. Some have newer versions than others. That's where you pick your distro and you make your decisions. And I talked about picking distros and whatnot based on several factors in another video. I'll put the link up here. So I'll show you some quick examples here of what I'm talking about if you've never seen it. I'm using Manjaro, Manjaro GNOME to be precise. And let me just zoom this in. And this is the package manager for GNOME. So using this package manager, it's fairly simple. You would just search for whatever software you want. So for example, GIMP, and it comes up with a list and I can see GIMP is right here. So I already have it installed, but I can do this to uninstall it, reinstall it, whatnot. And then it's just a matter of hitting apply. Let me just think of something I can install that I don't have here. Um, Thunderbird. Okay, so Thunderbird, I want email. I can click here, apply, and it's gonna tell you everything that it needs to download, including dependencies that that program needs. I'm gonna commit, you're going to put in your proper password, and it's gonna go ahead and click on details, and I can see everything that's happening in the background as it's downloading and everything. I'm going to cancel that. So it would download everything, unpack, and it would do everything for you. Now, the beauty of having this package manager is it knows everything that you've installed. This is your one-stop shop for everything that's on your system. So that's nice because like I showed you earlier, we have GIMP installed. If I wanna remove it, I go into my package manager and I can unselect GIMP, hit apply, and it will remove it for me. Linux is a little complicated in where it installs things. I have another video, I'll put the link up in the corner here on how the different folders work and where everything goes. If you're interested in going down that rabbit hole, um, it's, it's not as simple as Windows where everything goes in the programs file folder. So you could just go in there and delete it and it's gone. The packages, a lot of them, they end up putting configuration files and applications and libraries all over the system. So using a package manager is the way to install things. Unless, like I said, you have a specific special program that you want to use like VMware and you have to install it from the terminal. Those programs also have a special way to uninstall it through the terminal as well. So that's a little more advanced. If you're just starting out, try to stick to the stuff that's in the package manager. It's much easier and you're not going to hate life. So this is Pop! OS and it's based on Ubuntu. So you go into your applications, you're going to have a software manager, package manager, just the same as the others. They're all going to look slightly different, but it's the same general idea. So here you would search for the software that you want and you have the option to install or uninstall and it's gonna ask you for your password and it's gonna tell you what packages need to be installed 
and it's pretty much the same thing no matter which distro you're using. So some package managers just aren't as nice to look at as others. This is KDE, this is one example. If you open this up, add remove software is right there and the package manager for KDE is called Octopi. So let me just zoom this in here. So you can see it's not as pretty and graphical as the other ones, but it's just as effective. So if I type in Blender here and I were to click on it and say install, it's gonna tell me I have to install something else, whether it's optional or mandatory. This is optional, so I'm gonna say, nope, leave it like that. And you can see there's a lot of tabs here, news, output, files, info. It'll show you all kinds of different things that are included with this package. Now, this little checkbox here is the commit. So that's like hitting the apply or install buttons in the nicer looking GUI ones, but it does the same thing. You can also go here to transaction and commit as well. Click that and it goes through the same things. It's gonna tell you it's gonna install this, confirm, yes. And this is a live distro, so it's not gonna ask me for my password, but if it were a real distro, it would ask for the administrator password. And now you can watch it go through all its steps here. It's gonna download everything and it's going to install everything. So this is the output that you wanna see. Then there are some that are even more utilitarian and less pretty to look at such as synaptic but again they do the same thing it just looks different so zoom in here so this is just check boxes you know the the search the search here is in a different location but it's the same thing i say search for this it's going to search the packages mark for installation is going to tell me all this needs to be installed okay mark and then apply and it's going to pop up and say this needs to be done yes and it's going to ask me for my password and then it's going to start downloading and installing everything. So perfectly normal, different way of doing things. You can also, let me just zoom this out. Yeah, I'm forcing this close mid installation, which you shouldn't do. So quit and let's do terminal. You can also do everything from the terminal. Now this is gonna be later in life, later in your Linux life, Right now you're, you know, just using the package manager, getting a grip on that. So that's fine. That's completely normal. But later on, you're going to find that you're going to probably do more things from the terminal. So I can go here and say, sudo apt install. Apt is what uh, Ubuntu and Ubuntu based or Debian based distros use. So I can say install GIMP and ask for the password. And it's going to give me a text-based version of what's going on. So uh, these packages will be installed. These new packages will be installed. Yes or no, yes, and then off you go. Make sure you know your administrator password and you're good to go. Now with Manjaro, for example, let me just bring up the Manjaro terminal, make it bigger. It is Pac-Man, so you sudo Pac-Man and what did I not have installed? Thunderbird. And it's gonna ask me for my password and oh, you know what? Dash S. So there's little things you have to learn. Um, Ubuntu is a little easier because it uses more English with apt install everything, whatnot, and remove. Whereas with Pac-Man for Manjaro, there's little switches here that you have to learn like the dash S or dash R or dash capital S small s if you want to search different things that you're just gonna to have to learn and figure out but I mean it's not super complicated so you won't get completely lost once you've picked your distribution and you're comfortable with using it and it's stable and everything works and then it's time to advance don't rush that you know there's no need to do everything by the terminal but once you've reached that point then you can go online and you can search for how do I do these commands through the terminal. For me, I'm more comfortable installing software through the terminal. I can use the package manager as well. That's just fine. Uh, I just find the terminals just more at home for me. Um, package managers are also good for things like categories, audio, video, different groups and stuff like that that you can browse through manually if you're not quite sure what software there is. If you're not quite sure what software you can use, you can always Google it. So if you want an audio program in Manjaro, you can Google, you know, best audio program in Manjaro or 
whatever and look at your lists and then it'll say audacity and then you can go in here and you can just type in audacity and oh there it is install it boom you're done like i said don't go on websites downloading stuff check the repo first if it's not in there google it even maybe there's something that's not configured properly and you're not searching the repos properly who knows try the repo first Google it, it might even say when you're Googling it, oh, it's not in the repo for X distro. So you have to download it from here. Then go ahead and download it. But like anything, do your homework a little bit, such as how am I gonna uninstall it if I don't like it? So Google that first, make sure those instructions are there too, and bookmark it. I hope you found this handy, especially if you're a new Linux user coming from Windows, for example, where things work a little differently and this is a little new to you. But that's why channels like mine are here to help you out and show you that it's not really that scary. If you liked the video, click like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and share it on your social media. I'd like to quickly thank my Patreon patrons who are the producers of this channel. Carlos, Arknos, Carl, George, Matt, Kit, and Says. Thank you so much for your contributions. If you'd like to help support me, head over to patreon.com slash dorian dot slash and help me support the Linux community. That's all for now, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, bash on.